I really don't understand how I managed to break the game when the DLC is about having bugs. It, it's literally breaking the game DLC and I managed to break that DLC. What's up guys, welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. And today, once again, it's April 1st. And as many of you guys know, Landfall always releases something ridiculous on April Fool's Day. In 2017, we had Tab Z. In 2018, we had Tab G. In 2019, we had the full release of Tabs just out of nowhere that just dropped it on us. And this year, we get the bug update. No, bug DLC, there's a difference, that's actually important. There is a free version that you can get like any other update, but there's also a paid version. And if you spend a couple of bucks on that one, then all of the proceeds will be donated towards Doctors Without Borders. And that's not an April Fool's joke. I really need to make that clear. This is not a prank. It's completely serious. They are raising money to help save people's lives. The joke is what's in the DLC. It's a laundry list of ways to break the game. And we're going to be checking out every one of them. We'll start things off with bigger fireworks, which sounds amazing, but the thing is, I don't know if the fireworks are gonna be bigger, the arrow is gonna be bigger, or both. And I really don't want the arrow to kill these units. So we're gonna shoot at hay balers to start things off so that hopefully I can get a good look at what we're working with. <laughs> Come on, Landfall, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> these are fireworks, they're nothing short of a missile on a stick. They're not all that impressive. They got about as much push as a Coke bottle filled with Mentos. Yeah, I was kind of expecting more. Right! They explode! I forgot about how they <laughs> explode! Ah! <gasps> uh, I don't think NASA's ever confused their craft with a speck of dust on their screen, so maybe I'm not ready for the big leagues. I don't think the hobbits are gonna fare too well against these. Like, the arrows are bigger than they are. It's like hitting a toddler with a hockey stick. Fortunately, I don't really care if they survive. I just wanna send their mangled corpses to a different planet. <laughs> it's so fast. I can barely watch. There, there, there's, no, even, there's not even any time to say anything. It's just a streak and they're gone. I, I can't even follow. They, they clear the orbit in seconds. I'm gonna try to slow things down to the point where I can actually provide some commentary by using bigger and bigger units. We'll try a nice medium unit like the Jouster here. The wobbly horse is plenty heavy and he's got an astronaut on his back. He's all suited up. I do feel like this is still gonna go pretty quick though, so I'm gonna get into position for a takeoff. <laughs> Oh, uh, maybe it's a two-stage thing? You know, like the horse breaks off and the rider keeps going? No, they're... They're fine. His foot may have gotten stuck in the stirrup, which prevented him from breaking off and continuing on his journey, so some may consider this a catastrophic failure, but I call it a learning experience. It's about time this space program started to think bigger. A rocket ship... Technically, rocket horses are one thing, but UFOs, your flying saucers, are on a whole nother level. And willing to bet having the passenger inside will make a pretty dramatic difference. Okay, okay, well, the control isn't quite there. The ascension speed was great, and I really like the controlled return to Earth. Why does it act like a parachute? I mean, it, it's completely designed that way. That, that's, that's fully intentional, you know, a nice soft landing, and it's reusable. Elon Musk can eat his heart out. <laughs> Four or five times is his limit, okay? We've tried passengers riding the rockets. We've tried passengers riding a ship. We've tried passengers inside a ship. But what if the passenger was the ship? <laughs> the giant fuzzy, stupid ship. I have no doubt that Snuffy is gonna make us all proud. Okay, um, he's fine. Is he's fine? For a second there, I thought he was gonna break apart in low orbit, but he's just kind of spasming. They can only get his fat ass like a hundred feet off the ground. <laughs> Snuffy, come on, man. I could have fired a bottle rocket further. 
I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I could probably make an entire video just shooting units into space. But I really need to move on to more of these bugs because I know you guys want to see a lot of them. But that being said, if you guys have any recommendations for other stuff you want to see me rocket, or you want to see more episodes of the April Fool's DLC, then as always, be sure to leave a like in the video. Leave a comment. Your support is the reason that I keep coming back and doing this year after year after year. But I figured the obvious thing to try last would be the biggest unit. We're gonna put him on the edge of the map and up in a tree, give him a bit of a leg up. But even then, I don't know if this is gonna work. I get the feeling he is just, oh my God, you guys missed. How do you miss? He's so big. Can you at least get him off the edge? There we go. He should hold that beautiful T pose of his and then just fall into the abyss. Yeah, that is the opposite of space. Next up, we have Make Units Not Die, which is pretty much gonna amount to how many arrows can you spawn at once? Like, I don't wanna see a battle go on forever. It's usually the kind of thing that I would edit out of the video, but I am very interested in seeing an army of Artemis, like half a million dollars worth of Artemis, turn this giant idiot into a living pincushion. And he will be living because we don't need to worry about his death. My computer, on the other hand, not so sure. We're down to Microsoft Excel level of frame rate, but oh my god, the look on his face is too perfect. There's <laughs> so many arrows. Oh, right, they despawn. So they won't just keep building up until he's one giant arrow, but we are pushing him back. I've never seen that before. Usually that only works with ballista bolts. What do you think would happen if he falls off the map? Are they just gonna bite in the clouds? Or technically, he can't die. Do not get stuck on the rocks. Come on now, you, you keep pushing him back. <laughs> there we go. He's right there on the edge. Yeah, all right. So when you plummet, now what? Interesting. So does dying and getting ringed out not work the same way in this game? Are they not considered the same thing? No, he definitely dies. We were lied to. Moving on to make ranged units fire fast. Question now is how fast we talking? You mean like cheerleader fast? Because we've seen that before. We've been able to do that for a very long time, but I'm gonna try seven snake archers who have a horrendously long reload time versus a platoon of melee units. <laughs> They're outnumbered with like six to one right now. I say right now, because hopefully that won't be the case for very long. Okay. Well, it's not quite cheerleader fast, but it's definitely overpowered. <laughs> These guys can't move up. They're completely overwhelmed. There's no way they can deal with this. It's raining snakes, literally. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. I like that, it's a much more stable version of the cheerleader. Oh my God, guys, I hope you're clenching your buttholes right now because a lot of them are in trouble. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. The anime girl treatment never gets tiring. Oh, oh, king. <laughs> so if a snake grabs that sword, do they become the next king? I don't think we're ready for a dick shaped king. We've got snake archers, we've got cheerleaders. I wanna see how many snakes we can get on screen at once. I might wanna turn back on the units can't die thing because I get the feeling these guys are gonna get overwhelmed pretty quickly. Uh, no, I take it back. We definitely don't wanna turn on the units live forever thing because my computer may do what that snake is doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could definitely feel the vibrations down by my feet right now. Holy crap. Like, this is just a, a, a ball of snakes. They're not even individuals anymore. They're forming like some kind of weird serpent hive. I can't move. I gotta shut this down. I'm gonna lose the recording if I don't. How about we try another really underappreciated range unit in the potion cellar? Because it's got such a unique ability, but we never really get to see it on display because the unit sucks and it's very much taken for advantage by the rest of the peasant farmer faction. So you know what, they're gonna rebel. They're, they're gonna face off against one another and 
They may be outnumbered three to one, but I get the feeling it is going to rain down potions. <laughs> so everybody is drunk. And what exactly does that accomplish? Still not really sure. They just kind of fall over and stumble and spin around and do drunken stuff. <laughs> Some of them are dying. It's such a weird ability. You can't quite tell what's happening, but <laughs> stuff is happening. There's no two ways about that. It's just not very clear. I don't think I'm ever gonna get used to the potion seller. It's just the weirdest little thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see them fall down and then just get buried in a cloud. Like, for some reason, you died. How? We don't know. Overdose? I, I guess. Next up, we'll turn balloons into metal, which I assume is going to be the opposite of our space program. <laughs> We've got a bunch of flying units out there. We've got the Valkyries, and they're going to face off against a bunch of metal balloon firing archers. I would assume we're going to pull them down to Earth. I don't really know. This is gonna be very different. Yeah, look at that. Oh, and they can't even move forward. So, oh, it's temporary though. That's not good. And they can still dive even if they have the balloon on them. So in all reality, the Valkyrie was probably the worst unit to use here. I, I didn't think that they would act like a prison ball and chain. You think you'd be able to slow down the unstoppable might of the wobbly horse? Or would it just make it kind of wobble weirder? I don't really know. But imagine it's probably gonna have a hard time. Oh no. <laughs> it's not fair, they die too quickly. We have a way of fixing that though. The wobbly horse is now rightfully immortal, so we can't kill it, but we might be able to stop it. The balloon archers, if we put it in the air, that's only gonna make things worse. You do not want a flying immortal horse, trust me. But if the balloons were metal, then maybe we can weigh it down? We can stop its charge? You would think that would be pretty easy considering these legs. <laughs> I think it's working. Yeah, the charge has been completely foiled. It's not really charging, it's just kind of flailing. Wobbling, even. I mean, There's gonna be no winning. Like I said, it's immortal, but I wanna say we've contained it. Or at the very least, pissed it off. The noise is so weird. Just the balloon filling with metal. You never think you would hear that. Maybe that's the horse's knees? I don't really know. Does it have knees? I don't even want to find out. We're done here. Moving on to make units huge, which doesn't really work. It, it does. It makes everything big, but this is a giant hobbit. Can you really tell? Like When every unit is made proportionally bigger, then it's just all the same. Who cares? Unless you use giants, because now we have giant giants, and I'm gonna have them run amok in this city. It's the only thing I could think of. You put a bunch of other units next to one another and everything looks the exact same. These guys, however, have a hard time moving their super swole upper bodies down these streets. <gasps> I don't think the ice giants are gonna do particularly well here. They should have done a little more cardio and a little less upper body workout. Oh, yeah, that, that's not gonna do much. Okay, yeah, you're getting whacked with a tree. <laughs> Is the tree bigger? It might not be. It might just be the unit. Again, you can't really tell. It, it's not all that impressive of a bug. <laughs> We've been doing crap like this for a long time with mods, so I was expecting a little something else, but seeing them climb up on top of buildings to whack one another is pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that guy in the back definitely does not look so giant anymore. Do you think there's gonna be a winner? Did I remember to turn off units being invincible? Oh no, yep, yeah, we've definitely got some losers. <laughs> or nappers, maybe. Not 100% sure. I'm rooting for red team, but I don't think they're gonna be able to pull this off. You guys really shouldn't have fought your way out into the open. Now you... Frost giants can swing for the fences, and God knows you stupid hippies can't take a punch. <laughs> they don't seem, oh, oh, they do care. They can fall, the trees do hurt. <laughs> so what are we up to now? Uh, oh, there's only one left. Yeah, this is not gonna go according to plan. They've got three, maybe four, five red units left. 
We've only got one blue giant. Oh, oh, okay. Left hook, right hook, left hook. It's not gonna work out, guys. Just, just call it a day. You really do not. Whoa, uh, wrap around a butt punch. That kill him? Of course not. It definitely hurt him though. <laughs> and he's dead. Like, what more can I do? This, this is it. Making units tiny, however, is a very different story. We've got some very hoppy, hovery pygmy raptors, as well as some pirates that are too small to hold their giant guns. Not sure how this could possibly play out. Probably very similar to how it would if they were large, but their movements are super wonky. Oh my God, they are so little. <laughs> they even sound little. The little squeaks as they tear people apart and explode. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that they pick them up and parade around with them now, but yeah, that might not have been particularly fair. Bombs and guns are definitely a dinosaur's weakness. I want to give the bouncy raptors another shot, so we're going to have them face off against something a little bit more primitive. Primitive for us, incredibly futuristic for them. It's all relative. But now they should be able to eat these guys up and... I mean, they're gonna have a hard time walking around with their giant helmets and shields and axes. They're smaller than their shields. <laughs> their shields go from above their head to below their feet. What coverage? Holy crap. Well, the, again, the dinosaurs got completely freaking pounded. <laughs> They're such cool units, but so bad. Considering the wobbly horse has already gone to space and prison this episode, it seems only fitting that we have a cavalry charge in tiny format. <laughs> they flood in like ants and then... Oh, oh my god, it's just a dog pile? Not quite, but... <laughs> Close to being a dog pile? They all died instantly. I don't think I've ever seen a cavalry charge like that. That was really effective. We still got some alive. Uh, the ones on horseback are a whole lot more effective than the ones on foot, especially because the weapons aren't any smaller. This was already obnoxiously big, but it's only getting more and more difficult. What exactly does pillar mammoth mean? You know, everything up until now has been pretty self-explanatory, but does it change the mammoth unit? Am I gonna get some kind of problem? Uh, I'm not doing anything. Are they okay? I've got it. Oh my God, you have got to be kidding me. We could have got you into space this way. That would have been so much easier. I gotta zoom out just to get the full picture. I don't even know what to say. Like, I can't zoom out any further. I can't fit them all into frame. How could they possibly fight? Like, are they just gonna, oh, okay, camera. Oh, no. <gasps> no, and I randomly chose Cupid to face off against them. So it's just gonna be a, a giant snuffy orgy pile. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Well, they're busy doing their business, I gotta ask, how far can I push this? Because there's no limit to how many units I can place on the map. My game is gonna crash if I start the battle, but I could just keep going indefinitely. Couldn't I? I gotta find out, I gotta end this first. Just give them a minute to mop up. So if I click and hold, then I can just do this indefinitely? <laughs> I mean, the game does seem to not really appreciate it. Okay, uh, we're losing frames and wing beats. <laughs> Cupid isn't really moving anymore. I, I, I'm, I'm letting go, I'm letting go. Again, I really don't want to lose this recording. If my computer crashes because I push things way too far, I'm going to be pissed. Did they stop? I can't quite tell if they stopped. We, we could just give them the old pan up again and see. How far things go? Okay, this is gonna be a problem. How are you supposed to fight this? 
<laughs> it doesn't stop. Oh, there's the top. Maybe? Oh, actually, that may have very well reached the top of the world. But I think there's a dome around the outside. So they might be, like, squished up near the top. We could just climb up and see for ourselves. Holy crap. Uh, it's gotta end eventually, right? I don't, I can't, yeah, I can't go any further up than this. So this is as far up as I can go. The camera doesn't even stay that far up. And they went further. They went far beyond that. So I actually can't keep up with all the snuffies. So that's what it would look like if it rained snuffies. <laughs> I really did not need to know this. It's not gonna stop. There's so many of them up there. I, I gotta cut them off. You know what? I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And like I said, there are still a whole lot more bugs to check out. One of the biggest ones is the debug mode. They've made it so that you can grab units and fire arrows out of thin air and really just screw with the battle as it goes on, but not using units, using kind of like godly powers. That's pretty much an entire episode in itself, as well as a couple of other things. So if you guys wanna see that, as always, be sure to like this video, let me know, and I'll try to get these snuffies back to the wild. They're never going to be the same. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.